Comperts, Normalizing the Abnormal, Comperts versus Normal, Part 1. The Comperts curve, with its fat tails, is popular for explaining COVID in agenda countries. That doesn't make it a good fit, but rather a poor excuse for an abnormal phenomenon. Note to censors we use only government data. If you have a problem with the results, speak to the government. A lot of people forwarded a link to a generally excellent presentation by Ivor Cummins on the COVID-19 situation. Ivor Cummins presents a great deal of quality info, debunking the government narrative, and that's all to the good. As such, this is in no way an attack on his work or himself. Indeed, I'll be posting a link to his comments, and I hope he takes a peek at this video or the accompanying PDF. His video did, however, bring to the fore an item I'd been putting off, which is addressing the prominence given to the Gompertz curve by certain sources, including Nobel laureates, as best I recall. In the video, just as in the interview, I recall with one such notable, there is another associated phenomenon, a US-European centric focus which normalizes the contagion. I understand the desire for the reported figures to be natural, untainted, and for the reported contagions to be likewise, explained solely by science. Maybe include a piece on pollution, not you either, as best I recall. When such luminaries and others bring up e.g. pollution as a factor, I confess to a bit of a facepalm. Pollution, a centuries-old phenomenon and far worse in the UK post-World War II, did not suddenly attack in March 2020. Yet people raise it as an explanation of why the West was hit harder than the Far East. Amazing! A smog that devastated us for one month, coincidentally with the virus or exacerbating it. I don't think so. We're looking at the Gompertz not just because others think it explains COVID-19 charts, but because there is a legitimate fat tail issue which appears on a number of charts, as here with Germany. We've long been aware of the issue from our autofit normals, but a little extra padding hasn't been a significant challenge. We're okay with it as an observable feature. It doesn't impede our analysis. Here's our standard autofit normals in cases and deaths for Germany, a responsible agenda nation. Its charts look good, even though it's still massively hit relative to the Far East, just nothing close to UK levels. The autofit normal does an excellent job until Germany is safely down to 50% of its peak levels. Bravo normal. And then it begins to break away, not an issue and clearly distinguished. This is a key point. As a visual guide to analysis, the breakaway is clear. It grabs our attention and we can decide whether to investigate further. However, the normal curve did an excellent job of modelling the contagion to that point. The normal curve also gives us that fortuitous property that growth decline is constant. And as we see here, that is mirrored in the actual growth decline line with a very reasonable linear fit. Tweaked in the cases chart, we didn't bother in deaths. Looking at that growth analysis and its normal linear decay on, on log scales gives us a true trajectory, a very easy one to assess visually, so the divergence to horizontal is obvious and marked. However, it only does so after first going substantially below 1, so that the contagion decays as it should, naturally and here indeed normally. Republic of Korea, which was available to Ferguson even as he published, and to Johnson as he sent us into lockdown. Again, an almost perfect normal fit, with the clear linear constant rate decline in growth on both cases and deaths. Again, growth dropped well below unity before going sideways, as it has to to complete that curve. So normally, and then there's the tail. Fine, no problem. We've seen an entirely normal contagion. So when I see this for the UK, I go, what? Now, notice that the autofit, a simple Excel test for Max, has fitted cases to the right of the first spike peak in cases. Growth decline hit Unity 1 on 11th April. That was the true peak. 
Notice how, sure, it's not a bad fit for cases on the downline, but at the expense of a total distortion from the climb to peak. Let's manually assign the actual peak as determined by growth decline hitting Unity to 11th April, and voila, an excellent fit for normal restored. And we leave the original auto fit in pale grey blue for information. Let's drop the original just to emphasise what happened at peak in the UK. Like what? Look at the growth decline line. Zero impact from lockdown didn't do a damn thing. But at peak? Not having no peak? No sir. Now far be it from me to second guess the consciousness of a virus. But do you see it watching CNN or the BBC or tracking World Health Organization data? Who do you think might be doing those things? The people who actually do report the virus data? Maybe? This is old for our viewers, but if Ivor or any of his viewers see this, it's worth emphasizing this section, because before we throw out a very effective analysis using the normal curve, we want to people to see that a convenient fit isn't enough. There's a story here backed by data and analysis, and if even Nobel laureates would prefer things to be normal, that merely emphasizes how critical it is that we get to the bottom of normal versus Gompertz. If Gompertz is the holy grail, then fine, good one. But when you see how accurately normal fits, even the abnormal UK to peak, Gompertz is going to have to do far better. Providing convenient fat tails isn't enough. Indeed, if Gompertz explains responsible countries like Austria and Germany, that's one thing. But if it's used to explain hardcore agenda countries and their aberrations when it frankly doesn't, that's something else. I emphasize that Ivor Cummins and the Nobel laureate, Levitt perhaps, are good people. They're offering common sense, science space to counter the agenda. But there's a risk of brushing arson under the carpet. As such, we do what we do, show the analysis and let people decide for themselves. Now notice something else. What was the peak date for deaths in the UK? Let me zoom it up for you. Now, Ivor Cummins recognises the concept of infection to death, citing 23 days. Knock off 9 days for incubation and you've got 14 days from case to infection. That 14 days is chosen for a particular reason. Again, no criticism is implied. Rather, we're highlighting that what we're about to show you or have shown you is mainstream, natural. Nobody dies the day they go into hospital with COVID-19, or not typically. Here's Germany again. Check out its peak dates. Hint, look at the peak cases or deaths, but also check when the purple line crosses unity. Again, I'll zoom up. Now I'm reading that as 4th April for cases to 18th of April for deaths, 14 days. I'd accept a nudge either way, but that's also the figure we see in our standard charts. And what the heck, it's kind of a convenient number, isn't it? Don't sweat the small stuff. Now take a peek, so to speak, at the UK peaks. Again, I'll zoom out. Now I make that 11th of April. And 11th of April. Wow. You enter hospital, you're diagnosed, you're dead. Shit, that is some virus. For those wanting to excuse the UK, let's make it simple. Peak, 10,000 cases, 11th of April, 10% death rate, 1,000 deaths, but 14 days later. For a constant death rate, same virus, the peak in cases should be matched by a later peak in deaths. So we've got cases going sideways at peak instead of breaking below unity, deaths going sideways at peak in growth decline, when lockdown did absolutely nothing to change that trajectory, and the virus was so keen to maximize deaths that it killed people even as they got admitted and diagnosed. No wonder the UK is so concerned about this virus. It tracks cases and deaths, refuses to acknowledge lockdown, refuses to decline when it should, and kills people right away, no messing about. Except, have you ever met the, the virus? Discussed any of this with it? 
given it the opportunity to reply, everything you're looking at is the reported figures reported by the people who locked you down. You seeing it yet? So when people try and brush this off as, oh, it's gone perts, I have a bit of a problem. Actually, I have lots of problems. First, ignoring the rest of the world is basically ignoring that by some bizarre happenstance, the country's worst hit by a factor of 50 to 250 times, it's come down now, but it was there, believe me, versus the Far East, are the most powerful in the West. New York City, 229,000 deaths per 100 million population, our standard population. Singapore, another city, 470. That's New York City experiencing a virus 487 times as lethal. The Cuomo virus, it ain't the same virus, or it ain't the same reporting. So please, don't go gomperts on me just because it explains away the fat tales and allows you or other people to sleep better at night. A single standard chart of ours has so much more information than just about anyone out there. Normalised deaths and cases, cases to death lag, mortality analysis, lag death rates, a key fraud indicator, growth decline curves, autofit normals. Just understanding our charts needs a video. Chart and Stats Essentials. We don't touch on Event 201, Ferguson, Gates, 79 million bung to Imperial College in March, Gates, no normal till the vaccine, echoed by Trudeau in the UK, Gates, Johnson, Gates, Johnson, Gavi. We don't need to. Others do that. We nail the data and we hate to see others, even Nobel laureates, palming off the Western experience as normal and ignoring the entire rest of the world's data that contradicts that. That was Ferguson's trick. I'm certainly not going to hold back if I see others engaging in it, no matter how well-meaning they are. There's too much at stake for fraud to be palmed off as natural. We've got 140 charts lined up to illustrate Gompers versus Normal, and that's just the country charts. But having set the scene and our reason for concern, maybe we'll give you just a hint of what one of those looks like. That's a lot of slides to go through. You've seen our standard growth decline analysis for the UK with autofit normals for cases and deaths. Hopefully you'll agree that's a pretty stunning fit on the way up. Here's what we'll be looking at for Gompers versus Normal. Normal is green, Gompers is pale blue, actual deaths more representative than cases, which is a bit of a laugh, in red, dotted for daily, solid for cumulative. Notice that while the Gompers seems to be a good fit for that distended, slow tail, it achieves that at the price of not being in the slightest representative of the initial climb, while normal is a perfect fit. And if you think you can jiggle the Gompers to fit, you can't. That's an autofit Gompers, which frankly astonishes me that it was so easy, but thank heavens it was. There are simple and absolute rules that have to be followed. No cheating. So you can have a lousy fit up front to excuse the UK's absurd not dropping off drop off, or you can accept that it was perfectly normal up to peak, totally ignoring lockdown, but suddenly somehow going walkabout. Now I don't know why the virus would want to go walkabout, but delaying a contagion, slowing recovery, exaggerating cases and deaths, do you know anyone who might have a reason to do that? No, me neither. I love anyone who's countering the agenda. Live long and prosper, Ivor Cummins. And if you watch this video, well, maybe catch the next one on Gompers vs. Normal Part 2. That's it for now. I'm Andrew Mather, a 60-year-old Brit, mathematician, financier, technologist, husband, biker, pilot, healer, whatever. Feel free to get in touch, andrew at peerlessreads.com or andrewamather.com. Either should get to me.